Hey guys, Alton here. First off, I want to say thanks for checking out my YouTube channel. And for today's video, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at one of my selected lectures from my best selling 10 and a half hour introduction to information security management course. So let's go ahead and let's get into it. In this video, we're going to talk about symmetric encryption, commonly referred to as private key or secret key encryption. So what is symmetric encryption? Well, symmetric encryption is encryption that uses one key, one single key that we commonly refer to it as either a shared secret key or a shared private key. And we'll talk about why that's important. And that one key is used for both the encryption and decryption of data within a message. So both the sender and the receiver have to have that same key. If they don't have that same key, then they're not going to be able to decrypt a message that's sent to them with that key. So that same key is, like I said before, it's going to encrypt and decrypt all the messages. So let's go through this diagram that I put together. So what we have down here at the bottom is we have this shared secret key. And like I said, it's used both to encrypt a message and turn it into a ciphertext, which you see here. And that same key is also used to decrypt a message that you see here going to the receiver. So let's say that we have Bob. He's a sender, so I'm just going to put an S here. He's a sender. And then over here we have Sally, and she's a receiver, so I'm just going to put an R. And then let's also say that this is his key. So Bob is going to have his key, and he's going to use his key to decrypt this plain text. He's going to decrypt it, and then it's going to turn into the ciphertext. And so what's going to happen is Sally is going to receive this ciphertext, and then she's going to use this secret key, Bob's secret key that he shared with her, to decrypt it, and then she's going to be able to view it as plain text. But there's something in here that we didn't talk about, and that is, how does Bob get this key over to Sally? And that's an issue with secret key or private key encryption. So within a small organization, it's not an issue. Bob can share it with Sally, or the IT department can share it with her locally. But what happens if you have people across the country, or you have people across the world, that's where it becomes an issue and that's where asymmetrical encryption comes into play and we'll be talking about how that works and also how symmetric and asymmetric can work together in some certain instances so let's talk about this a little further so symmetric encryption if we compare it to asymmetric encryption symmetric encryption is a lot faster it's much more efficient at encrypting large amounts of data than asymmetric encryption, which we'll talk about in the next video. But the downside is what we just talked about previously on the other side. The downside with symmetric encryption is that it makes it hard to initiate the communication the first time. Meaning if Bob wants to send a ciphertext over to Sally, right? If he wants to take this plain text, convert it into a ciphertext, and then send it over to Sally, well then how does he originally, how does he get this key over to her? So how do you securely send that key over to her? And so that's the issue, and that's the issue at hand. And like I said, within a small organization, maybe we're a very small company, then it's not an issue. But once we start getting to the point where we're in different locations physically, then it becomes an issue. And that's where asymmetric encryption comes into play, where we have private keys and public keys. Because here's the thing with private key or symmetric encryption is that this secret key, it can both encrypt and decrypt your data. So it's only as secure as the people that are holding it, meaning the people such as Bob and Sally. So if this key gets in the hands of a malicious actor, a hacker, or somebody within the organization that's an insider threat, then your data is no longer going to be secure. This ciphertext here 
is no longer going to be secure. So whatever we do in regards to sharing our private key with other users within an organization, we need to make sure that number one, we share it in a secure manner. And number two, it's stored in a secure manner as well. And so that's the downside of symmetric private key encryption, because even though it's very efficient compared to its counterpart, asymmetric encryption, and it's a lot faster at encrypting large amounts of data, we have the issue of sharing it securely and making sure that it's stored securely. And so asymmetric encryption tries to solve that issue by using what we call our private and public key pairs, which we'll talk about in the next video. So just understand that that with our private key or our shared secret key, however you want to call it, we can use those terms interchangeably, that the issue is getting it to the people that you want to share encrypted data with and also having it stored in a secure manner as well. So that's the issue with it. Now that you know that, let's talk about some of the popular symmetric encryption algorithms. And we're gonna talk about three specific ones. We're gonna talk about DES, Triple DES, and AES. So both DES and Triple DES are no longer used, but historically they were used and typically people want you to know what these are. So DES stands for Data Encryption Standard. It's an older encryption algorithm. Specifically, we're talking, remember, about symmetric encryption algorithms. So this is an older symmetric encryption algorithm, and it was used fairly widely dating back to the 1970s, but for quite some time, it's been compromised and it's no longer in use. So we no longer use DES, but it's one of the things within a lot of our information security books and a lot of certifications, everybody wants you to know what it is. So to make an improvement over DES, Triple DES was developed. And so it improves DES by encrypting the data with DES three times with two and even sometimes three different keys to encrypt it and make it more secure. But the issue with Triple DES, even though it made a significant improvement over DES, it consumes a lot of processor power and memory resources. So as you can imagine, because it's doing multiple rounds of encryption and with potentially multiple different keys, up to three keys, it's going to consume a lot of our resources on our computer. So even though it's more secure, what ended up happening is AES came about and AES is a lot less resource intensive, it's more secure, and so it ended up replacing Triple DES, and it's now the current standard. So let's take a look at AES. AES stands for Advanced Encryption Standard. And like I said, it's not only faster, but it's also more secure, meaning it provides stronger encryption than both DES and Triple DES. And it's also very commonly used worldwide. And in fact, it has been the official encryption standard for the United States federal government since 2002. So now being 2018, we're going on 16 years. And AES is the standard within the United States federal government. And it's not only the standard within the United States federal government, but non-governmental organizations also use it as well. So internationally, it's recognized as one of the most secure and fast in regards to taking up a lot less resources than Triple DES did. And it's what we use for symmetric encryption in our networking and our Windows environments if we want to use symmetric over asymmetric encryption. So that's our introduction to symmetric encryption. If you have any questions about symmetric encryption, please let me know. Um, but if you have questions about asymmetric and how that differs, hold off on those questions because we're going to talk about asymmetric encryption in our next video. So thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next video. 
Well, I hope that you enjoyed today's video and you learned a lot from it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Now, if you're interested in taking this full course or just learning more about it, check out the video description down below because I've included a link where you can learn more about the course and enroll into it if you'd like. So again, thanks for watching my video. I appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you guys at the next video. Take care.